Hello everyone, Dr. Hasbullah here and in this video, we are going to be looking at fluids in motion. Before we go any further into the derivation of equations and solving problems, there are a few terminologies that you need to know about fluid in motions that will help you in the future. First of all, if you have fluids in motion, if you have a moving fluid, whether it is internal flow, for example, flow in pipe or external flows, let's say flow over aerofoil of an aircraft, how do you describe that fluids. There are two ways of describing fluids in motion. First is called Lagrangian description. And another one is called Eulerian description. Now, what are the differences between Langangian and Eulerian system? First of all, if you have a moving fluid, there are two options which you can describe what the fluid is doing. First, what you can do is that you can pick a single particle and follow wherever it goes. Okay, and that is called Langangian description. And the second thing that you can do is you can stay in one place and you have a boundary of inlet and exit and you simply observe what happens in that particular volume that you have created. And that is called Eulerian system or Eulerian description. Now, obviously, it doesn't matter whether you use Lagrangian or Eulerian types of description because in the end, you are still tracking the same fluid. So in the end, the answer that you were looking for, regardless of whether you use Eulerian or Lagrangian, the answer will still be the same. But sometimes, depending on the problems that we are trying to solve, we can choose either Eulerian or Lagrangian system that would make our life easier. But that depends on the problems that you are trying to solve. But for now, it is just sufficient for you to know that we have two types of fluid description, which is Lagrangian and Eulerian. The next terminology or the next three terminologies that I want to introduce to you is called a path line, strict lines, and streamline. Now, these three types of lines are also used to describe fluids in motion. A path line shows the history of where the fluid has been. For example, if a fluid has been going through a circular motion, for instance, then the path line would look something like that. A strict line shows where the particle currently is. Let's say when you have a moving fluid, for example, in a pipe, then you put a die on that fluid and you see something like this. And that is your strict line. It shows you where exactly the particle is. And finally, is the streamline. Streamline is also like strict line, only that the tangent of the line is the velocity vector of that fluid. Okay, so if a streamline looks something like this, and if you pick any point, let's say we pick this point, then the tangent of the line at that point is the velocity vector, okay? And let's say we pick this line, so the tangent goes here, and this is the velocity vector at that particular point. Now, if you are hearing this for the first time, you can see that path lines, streamlines, and strict lines is almost similar to each other. Now, you are not completely wrong because in steady flow, path line, strict lines, and streamlines is exactly the same line. Now, what is steady flow? So for steady flow, path lines, strict lines, and streamlines are the same. Okay, but what is steady flow. Steady flow means that the flow at a particular point does not change in time. It doesn't mean that the flow does not move, but the velocity doesn't change. For example, if you have a flow in pipe, okay, and you pick a particular location, and let's say that the velocity of water here is 5 meter per second, right? And what happens is that you look away, and one second later, you look again at that pipe, the water at this location is still moving at 5 meter per second. 
Now that is steady flow. The velocity does not change with time. Also, in order to solve equation for fluids in motion, for example, Bernoulli equations, there are specific assumptions that is based on how you categorize the fluid. Some fluid can use Bernoulli equation, but some cannot. Okay, now let's take a look at what are the classifications of fluids. So classification of fluid flows The first classification that we are going to make is viscous versus inviscid fluid. Now, as you may already guess, the term viscous has something to do with viscosity. And we know that viscosity determines the internal friction of the fluid. So, if the fluid has viscosity, meaning that in a pipe, if the flow is moving from left to right and if I want to plot the velocity profile inside the pipe, I know that at the wall, the velocity will be zero because this is a no slip condition, right? And then the velocity will gradually increase because of the viscosity just now. And what happens if I have viscosity is that the flow will look something like this. And you have U max in the middle maximum velocity in the middle. Now, this is viscous fluid. Now, this problem can be made simpler if I assume that the flow is inviscid. Now, what is inviscid fluid? Inviscid fluid is where we neglect the effect of viscosity. We simply assume that the fluid has no viscosity. Now, if the fluid has no viscosity, meaning there is no shear force in the fluid, and what do you think will happen to the velocity profile just now? It is simply going to be something like this. Right? And this is called inviscid fluid. And that is our first classification, which is viscous and inviscid fluid. Our second classification is called lamina versus turbulent. Now, if you are hearing this for the first time, what is lamina and what is turbulent? For example, if you have a flow in pipe, and you have a die, and you put it inside the pipe, and you turn on the pipe very slowly. What happens is that the dye will flow like this. It's going to move from left to right in a very smooth manner. Now, what if you turn up the velocity of the water inside that pipe and you put the dye inside? What happens to that dye? I would imagine that the dye will look something like this and then it's going to start mixing in a random manner inside that pipe. Okay, and this type of flow is called lamina flow. It is a very smooth flow and the particle doesn't mix with each other. Okay, and the second type of flow is called turbulent flow. Now, there is nothing smooth about turbulent flow. It is very random. Okay, and it makes a lot between particles around it and that is the definition of lamina and turbulent flow and in engineering application the way we determine lamina and turbulent flow is by a quantity called Reynolds number and the symbol for Reynolds number is RE and RE is equal to rho times velocity times diameter of the pipe if this is flow in pipe divided by mu and as usual this is density this is velocity of the fluid. This is diameter of the pipe. And this is kinematic viscosity. And a flow can transition between lamina to turbulent when a certain Reynolds number is reached. And this is called critical Reynolds number. It means that if the Reynolds number is below this critical Reynolds number, then the fluid is lamina. If the Reynolds number of the fluid is above the critical Reynolds number, then the fluid is turbulent. For example, the critical Reynolds number for a rough wall pipe is about 2000. 
So if you calculate the Reynolds number of the fluid that is inside the similar pipe and you find out that the Reynolds number is less than 2000, you know that the fluid inside that pipe is lamina. And if you calculate the Reynolds number to be greater than the critical Reynolds number, you know that the fluid inside that pipe is turbulent. Now, lamina and turbulent is very important because the way we calculate the shear force later, as you will find out, is different between lamina and turbulent. The way we calculate losses inside the pipe is also different between lamina and turbulent. But for almost all engineering applications and the flow that you see around us, most of it is turbulent. Very rarely that you find a flow inside an engineering device that is lamina. Now moving on to our third and final fluid classification is compressible. versus incompressible flow. As the name suggests, compressible means the density can change over time. And this usually happens for gas. If gas is moving fast, then the density can change over time. And incompressible flow covers water or anything liquid. You cannot compress liquid, isn't it? Or gases with low velocity and the threshold for velocity whether or not you know a gas is compressible or not is called Mach number and Mach number is velocity over speed of sound let me write this for you this is velocity of the fluid and this is speed of sound and if Mach number greater than 0 0.3 then we can assume that this gas is compressible but if Mach number is less than 0 0.3 we can assume that it is incompressible These, these assumptions are very important because later you will see that the way you calculate the fluid properties is different whether or not the flow is compressible or incompressible. And finally, if you are wondering how do you find speed of sound, it is C equal to square root of KRT and K is specific heat ratio. R is gas constant and T is temperature in Kelvin. And with all of that, these are pretty much all of the terminologies that you need to know before we move on to the equations and problem solving. And if there are other terminologies, then I will introduce you later when we solve problems. But for now, please get familiar with these terminologies and understand what do they mean exactly. That is all from me for this video. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.